Voltamos. Olha, a Maria Cândida vai nos mostrar agora uma entrevista com um famoso e conceituado psicanalista americano chamado Stephen Paul Adler. Esse cara, importantíssimo, eu o conheci, ele desenvolveu uma nova técnica de hipnose para a cura de traumas. Graças a Deus nós não temos traumas. Não. Quem falou? Eu não tenho. Eu acho que eu tenho. Não... Eu acho que eu tenho. Vera, você tem traumas? Não. Por que você me chutou aqui embaixo da mesa? Falei, nós não temos traumas. Aí, pá, o chute minha. Não tem trauma nenhum. Nem você, Carol. Eu acho que eu tenho algum. Você tem algum? Ah, acho que todo mundo tem esses traumas. Às vezes pequenos ou grandes, mas os pequenininhos todo mundo não, tem. Esse cara é para mega trauma. É. Trauma bem grande. A Maria Cândida vai conversar em inglês? O inglês da Maria Cândida está respeitabilíssimo, não é? Eu vou falar da WhatsApp, vou aproveitar, porque eu estou vendo a Maria Cândida circulando pela WhatsApp para poder praticar. O WhatsApp é a nossa escola de inglês e que pode lhe conferir fluência no idioma em apenas 18 meses. A metodologia da WhatsApp é especial, foi desenvolvida para o público adulto. A Maria Cândida já é adulta? Sim. Mais ou menos. <risos> Tem um pouco um lado infantil, mas é adulta. Não, mas é que a metodologia, sabe o que, que é? O senhor já está lá, 35, 40, vai numa escola de inglês, se é. mistura com uma meninada. É aí longe. não, aí é uma é. Cla... Não é ruim? É. é ruim, não é? Então a metodologia Ainda da mais WhatsApp... quando a meninada sabe mais do que você. <risos> aí é não ruim. sabe, não é só saber. O problema é a convivência, é o choque de gerações. É o professor poder administrar um garoto de 14 anos e um cara de 48 é, que está lá. Uhum. Não é? Essa é a... É a... Isso é inglês para adultos. Para nós. WhatsApp, faça um teste online, veja como está o seu inglês e veja também informações dessa metodologia. Bem, falei tudo isso, mas vamos voltar a Maria Cândida, e que teve esse encontro aqui em São Paulo, na Artefato Beach and Country. Ele ficou dois dias aqui. Vou repetir, Stefan Paul Adler, que é um psicanalista americano, e que desenvolveu uma nova técnica de hipnose para poder dissipar, dizimar, melhor dizendo, traumas das pessoas. Hoje eu vou entrevistar uma autoridade em psicanálise. Ele é americano, atua na área há 44 anos, em Nova York. Ele é pós-doutor, certificado em 18 tipos de psicoterapia. Ele já deu aulas em vários locais. Olha, eu vou ler um pouco para vocês verem a importância dessa pessoa. Na New School for Social Research da NYU, Universidade de Nova York, National Psychological Association for Psychoanalysis e no National Institute for Psychotherapies. Nos últimos 15 anos, o foco dele foi em hipnose ericksoniana e trauma psicológico. Ele está lançando a segunda edição do livro Hipnose Ericksoniana, Estratégias para Comunicação Efetiva. E eu estou aqui com o Stephen Adler. Nice to meet you. It's, It's a, a pleasure. It's a pl my pleasure. <laughs> Doctor, can you tell me more about this Erickson philosophy? I've been practicing for a number of years and trained in many different therapies. But when I found the Erickson uh, approach through Ericksonian hypnosis, I really found, uh, I had found my home. Because one of the important things is that when, when you walk into the room, I'm really interested in who you are. And also, I don't know how we're going to work together or how we're going to solve the problem, but I'm really curious about that. So I don't have a protocol or suppositions as to what I'm going to do. And I know your, your self-healing that you may need additional information, you may need to touch into your unconscious mind because, you know, 10% of our uh, communication and our awareness is here in the intellect. 90% is unconscious. So we work together, we co-create an environment in which that 90% really begins to dialogue and to help you change your life. How do you connect the patient to the unconscious? First of all, it's the environment, the relational field mm -hmm. that we both create. But the moment you walk into the room, I am 
trying to come into synchronization with you. So however you're breathing, I'll adjust my breathing. I'm, I'm looking at your body language, your tone of voice, and I'm trying to uh, synchronize myself. And the unconscious automatically says, oh, he's trying to get to know me. And, and the connection starts, and I'm very concerned, because this is where the real exchange is going to happen. Not necessarily in our words, but in the nonverbal communication. And there are a number of strategies to keep uh, this part, the intellect, from interfering. Because the intellect often says, no, wait a minute, I've been in power a long time. I don't know if I want things to change. And how do you change this? <laughs> <laughs> well, two ways. You initially, you begin by using some of the strategies, which I can use in a therapy session. I can use to help people learn at a deeper level if I'm giving a lecture or a training. I use strategies to distract your conscious mind. So it's sort of saying, what, what is he saying while I speak to your unconscious mind? And the second strategy? The connection comes with my intention. So if my intention is to tell you about your life or what you're doing or what the problem is, the unconscious mind says, no, 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 no. My intention is to assist you in the healing and to do it indirectly. So I'm trying to perceive what information you need from me because once you get the information you need, you'll put things together in a different way. So I tell stories and I use metaphors and I use my own life sometimes as an example, as a role model um, or other people that I've worked with who said, yes, you can, you can tell people about what I struggled with. People can really identify with that and they really feel that we're in a dialogue. Ele usa um método que é a hipnose. How okay. is to work with hypnosis? First of all, it's wonderful for me because my job is to connect to you and I want to know who you are, so that's a lot of fun. And then we're problem solving what information, what story, what approach is going to give you an additional insight. For instance, I'm not going to try and change your life. You have certain things that happened in a reality and it has a frame around it. But if I can change that frame like you would on a painting, the facts don't change, but your perspective does. So um, I want you to be in a, a deep state of, of learning, being able to receive what I say and connect to your inner resources. And that's a trance state. When you really focus your attention, you connect to that. But the person don't, don't sleep. No, because if you're asleep, you're asleep. You always want an observing part of the person there to help process. And also in the Ericksonian work, you remember anything I say to you and you will automatically suggest anything that's not right for you because you're in an alert state. Um, you're usually more relaxed and your conscious mind is observing, but it's kind of quiet, it's kind of on the side, but you're not asleep. Ele trata casos como abusos sexuais, terrorismo, pessoas que passaram por casos como World Trade Center é, e outros desse tipo. É, people that pass cases like terrorism, mm -hmm. you treat it, right? I treat a lot of people that have been Uh, victims of terrorism and kidnapping, a lot of kidnapping, which is part of the terrorist activity. I've done a lot of work in Guatemala and Mexico. And it's and very difficult? It's not difficult for them to understand they've been traumatized, because many people come and say, no, I have no trauma. When a victim of kidnapping comes to you, they know they have trauma. The difficulty is not with the person who was kidnapped, but to have the family participate, because the family has been helpless. They didn't know if that person was going to come back to them alive or dead. Um, they may have had to raise ransom and it took time. And a family that's used to being very powerful now loses that ability to assert that power. If the family doesn't become involved, then within a year you see that there are divorces in the family, the family business comes apart because the whole system has now been threatened. It's easier to work with the individual, but I prefer and often won't work with a, a kidnapped victim unless the family participates because 
their whole worldview has changed. They now are no longer safe and secure. I'm curious about something. Yeah. Um, fame caused trauma. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Do you have any case? Uh, I've had a number of cases of very famous uh, actors and actresses and several very famous authors. And, you know, w the first thing that I, I work with, with uh, very famous people is the moment you believe that you're a star and that's who you are and you believe what the press is saying about you and you forget that you're a human being, you're in trouble. And then the other thing I work with is most stars or famous people have both the adoration and all the money they need as a, as a rule and they don't realize that they can do anything they want and there aren't very many consequences. You know, if I go out and use drugs, I may be arrested, uh, I may be heavily fined, I have to go into rehab, and nobody says, oh, you poor thing. If I'm a famous star and I'm, I'm, I'm in my sixth rehabilitation mm -hmm. and I've just violated the law again, everybody's very interested mm -hmm. and nobody cares what's happening to the soul of the person who's famous. And, and you know, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jackson died of Michael Jackson, but he also died because of the public and what the public did to him and what the public um, uh, vision of who he was and and he began to believe it too and so I often feel that some of the saddest experiences I've had is with famous people because the pressures for them to forget who they are and what they really need and who they want to be and they become what they see on the screen and then they're lost. Who do you think um, the most important actors mm -hmm. and actresses that are singers that died because of trauma, mm -hmm. like fame trauma. Fame, yeah. You know, they do because... Uh, like, do you yeah. remember Marilyn Monroe? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elvis Presley, do you yeah. think? Oh, definitely Elvis Presley. You know, what I'd say, what they... Uh, I want to try and make it really objective, but they lose their center. They forget who they really are. You know, when you, uh, just recently, and I was uh, amazed to read it, do you know what the first words that God said to Adam and Eve? Where are you? Now, God knew where they were, and God wasn't asking a rhetorical question. God was saying, where are you inside? And I think it's very important that the first question that's asked of humankind is, where are you? As if the universe is saying, if you forget and stop asking yourself, where are you? Then life becomes a tragedy. 